Hello everybody. My name is Curtis Eckerman and today I'm going to show you how to use the Seek app in, from iNaturalist on your smart device. So currently I have Seek downloaded on my phone and you can see the two icons here for both iNaturalist and Seek. And the first thing I should address is uh, what's the difference between Seek and iNaturalist? Both of them are made by iNaturalist. The iNaturalist app was made first in conjunction with um, iNaturalist, the website. And it was used primarily to uh, be an interface with um, the iNaturalist website. Seek was developed later, only a few years ago, and it was made in response to um, uh, catering towards younger uh, viewers, younger observers, in particular because iNaturalist does store data uh, on the website and so that was a concern for some with regards to children and as a result uh, Seek was developed for that purpose. However, there's a feature in Seek that's very interesting and that is that it has, it uh, incorporates the uh, AI uh, interface where it will use a facial recognition type of software to recognize organisms and identify them for you, or at least attempt to identify them for you. There are some limitations to that, but I'll cover that here in just a moment. So Seek is um, very useful. and In fact, I highly recommend that you start with Seek, even though down the road you may decide that you don't want to use either Seek or the iNaturalist app and just want to deal with the web page directly. That's fine, but Seek is a very, very useful app for those that are unfamiliar with organisms and are first learning how to take a good picture and make a good observation in iNaturalist. Um, and there are a couple of other features that are different about Seek and uh, iNaturalist, and I'll look at those as we go into the app. So I'm going to start by going into the Seek app by simply clicking on the app. Now I should also mention that both of these apps are available on the Google Play Store as well as iTunes. Just look for Seek by iNaturalist and iNaturalist and both of those apps are available on both platforms and will be useful on any smart device. So I'm going to click on Seek and uh, this is what you'll get and the uh, first of all make sure to um, uh, I'm going to skip this information now. Make sure that you have your location information su set up for your phone. That is, make sure the location uh, information is turned on. Uh, Seek and iNaturalist app both use that information to um, gather where you took an observation. That's an important piece of your observation is where was the organism sighted, for instance, and of course the date and time as well. Now this is uh, a part where you can log in with iNaturalist. So you can connect to iNaturalist um, and that way it'll allow you to um, add your observations through Seek into iNaturalist directly or you can continue without signing in. We're going to go ahead and sign in to, to we're going to log into iNaturalist. And I'm going to use the um, sign in information that I used to uh, log in my great grandmother. Uh, just as a demonstration, and I'm going to uh, log in. And by doing so, I will connect. I'm now connected to um, uh, iNaturalist through Seek, and I'm going to allow Seek to access this device information. I'm going to allow all the time, and I'm going to go ahead and get continue. Okay, here are, here's my major interface. Um, this location, it's good to set your location nearby. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oops, actually, it's, it's going to wait until I take a picture here in just a second. But um, just to take an image, and, and this to, to access different parts of this app, use the um, settings down on the lower left of the of the screen I'm gonna click on it it's the three lines on top of each other next to the camera I'm going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to give me my menu I can see I have the home achievements challenges so one of the things about seek that is different 
then um, iNatural says that it, uh, because it's geared towards younger observers, it does have various games and challenges and missions that you can do to uh, seek out various types of organisms. And it uses your location to look for organisms that would be close to you. That's another reason to turn on um, the location information. You can also go, go look at your observations. And then, of course, you can look at iNaturalist. I'm going to click on iNaturalist again. You are currently connected. Um, to iNaturalist and uh, you can go and access iNaturalist from here but that's this is not really the place to do that um, you can also change settings and there's also a little bit of information about this in particular what you're going to use is you're going to use <coughs> the camera and so I've got this open and I'm outside I'm looking at various organisms I can use this in one of two ways I can use this first to for its primary objective and that is to add observations um, to uh, iNaturalist for your purposes, or I can simply open it up to see what the identification is of a particular organism. So let's do that. Let's click on the camera icon on the bottom center of the screen, and it's going to bring up, uh, I'm going to allow it to take pictures, I'm going to allow it to use my photos and media on, the, on this device, because I can also upload images from it. And I'm just going to hit get continue. So this is remember to be safe, um, be aware of your surroundings when you're outside and I'm now looking at my camera and so it's looking at a picture of my desk currently I'm going to let me zoom out here I've got a box with a few insects in it that I have I've pinned and I, what I want to do is show you how this works so it's already starting to work I'm gonna first use this moth observation as I hold it still notice that what it's doing it is attempting to identify this organism already and it's using information it has stored in the database of iNaturalist based on local species um, and as a result it is uh, it's decided that this is a white line sphinx moth and it and you can see in the green box above white line sphinx that it says this is the species name right now I can actually go into settings and have it take a picture as soon as it's got a species identification or when I'm ready, I can simply um, click the camera and take a picture. And I've just done that. You can see it's thinking. And I've just added a photo, or I'm, I'm just taking a picture of this. Now, in this case, I found an insect. You can see it gave me a little badge for that. I can also um, post this observation to iNaturalist. I can wait until later or I can decide to uh, add more images. I can click on back to camera. And I can take another picture if I want to instead. And it's going to do the same thing. And so um, here in this case it's going to ask me if I want to replace the old photo or keep the, or use a new one. I'm going to use the new one here. And it's going to um, allow me then to post this to iNaturalist. Now one of the uh, differences here with Seek and I, than iNaturalist is that Seek generally only wants you to take one picture. The iNaturalist app you'll see will allow you to take multiple pictures and in fact it's encouraged for doing um, observations to take more than one image but as you can see there's a big advantage here uh, um, to this. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to just click on the camera again and go back to my camera. I'm going to show you where this uh, may not work as well or uh, it'll work but we may not get to species. For instance I'm going to look at this beetle and you can see that currently it is identifying it as a beetle. I'm going to zoom in even. This is one of the great things about your phone is you can zoom in, you can focus more. I'm just tapping on the center of my screen to get a better focus of this beetle and you can see it's got it down the family hister beetles um, there's a lot of similar ones here uh, this is a hister beetle I'm not going to get this to species now there's a couple of reasons why I'm not going to get this to species one is is that because this is a pretty unusual beetle there's probably not a lot of information in blackboard or excuse me I'm sorry about blackboard in iNaturalist to um, allow it to accurately identify uh, uh, this particular organism. Uh, another reason is just because it's small, it's all black, it just may not have enough details to be able to identify it further than this. And that's okay. Uh, keep in mind that you identifying it to a hister beetle is probably better than you would have come up initially yourself and therefore you've at least added an identification 
and someone else in the community will be able to help with th this identification. But by using um, Seek, what I noticed, like if I took this image, let's say I took a picture this far back, let me focus here, what it's going to tell me is I got a beetle, but it's going to train you as I get closer, you know, you, as you look for the right angle, as you look for the uh, the right, you know, a nice focus, it's going to help you get better and better identifications. And so that's why I recommend you using Seek because it's going to help train you to take a good observation and uh, help you figure out angles and closeness and how close you should be to something and, and uh, uh, give you a good chance at getting a picture that's going to be identifiable uh, at least, if not here, at least in the community. So uh, one last example here again is a beetle that is more distinct and as a result is able to identify it fairly quickly. These black spots in the back and the black blotch on the, the, the uh, thorax are probably good indicators of this particular species. Again, there are a bunch of similar types of beetles like this in other places, but because it's using my location, it's saying that this is what matches. It matches the color patterns and it also matches what is in the area. You'll notice, in fact, this particular spe specimen um, um, was collected in Iowa and it turns out this particular uh, organism is widespread. Okay, so that is how you're going to use uh, uh, Seek. It's a very useful app in helping to, you to identify things and to help train you to take proper photos. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the iNaturalist app and how it's different from this.